All right, g'day guys. So this is going to be a part two on this Skywatcher ED80. Now, a couple of weeks back, maybe a bit more, I did a part one on this just to explain my objective here, which was to try and build a little budget Astro rig out of this Skywatcher ED80. So this Skywatcher ED80 was purchased second hand and I've mainly been using it for visual. It's a great little visual telescope. Um, and what I wanted to do was just see, with a couple of changes, just see what can I what can I build in terms of a budget astrophotography rig? I mean, budget in terms of astrophotography terms is relative, but you can spend, anybody who's been doing astro knows you can spend a hell of a lot of money on it. So look, just to summarize, like, I can't remember exactly what I paid for this telescope. It was like about $500 Australian uh, second hand on the second hand market. You can pick these up sort of used. Um, um, it is a sort of an older sort of design, but it's got good quality glass in it. So it's got good ED, reportedly FPL 53 glass in it. The focuser on the back here I did change to a just a slightly better two-speed Crayford focuser, which enabled me to be able to fit on this Gemini, this Gemini um, electronic focuser, um, which is a very cheap, affordable focuser you can get on AliExpress. I think it cost me $100 for that. Um, this field flattener, it's a generic field flattener for refractors F5 to F7.5, that cost about $150. In terms of the camera, so it's a pretty, you know, it's a good little camera, it's a smaller sensor, but it's the ASI 533 one-shot colour, so a really good cooled one-shot colour camera. Now these go again, you can pick these up pretty, pretty readily on the second-hand market, so here in Australia I've seen them from about $900 to about $1,200. So you can pick these up and it's a really good sensor. It's low noise, it's um, easily, you know, you calibrate your frames really easy. It's basically a smaller version of the 2600, the ASI 2600 or the IMX 571 sensor. So it's a really, just a really good solid, easy sensor. And then I've got a filter draw in my imaging train because I needed 55 millimeter back focus. But the point is I got this out for about two or three nights of imaging. I imaged the Horsehead Nebula and I imaged the Tarantula Nebula because both of those targets are kind of in nice positions now. So I spent about two nights doing them with a narrowband filter, a duo narrowband filter in, an Antlia duo narrowband filter. So that's capturing those images in, in narrowband. So you can take longer exposures, good for when you're in moderately light polluted skies like myself. Or what I also did is I spent one night taking it without a filter, other than just a UVIR cut filter, and I took some um, same targets, but just in RGB. And then my guide scope was just a cheap SV Boney um, guide scope, 50 millimeter, and a little ASI 120 mm camera, which is just a classic sort of guide camera. And that's pretty much, that was pretty much my rig. So a really, like I said, a really budget friendly rig. In terms of the main two things, of course, for imaging is the field flattener. So I can get, you know, a flat field, obviously. So it still leaves this scope at its native F7. I think it's F7 or F7.5. But it's, you know, it's going to flatten that image out for you. And also this EAF, because of course, if you're imaging, you really do need some sort of a, I mean, you can do it without, I'll be honest, you can do it without, so you could start without that, but it makes life a lot easier when you can um, set up a system where it will automatically focus for you if it started to shift focus throughout the night or temperature or whatever it is. Um, so that was the rig. So why don't we go over to the computer now and have a look at the images that we actually got out of this and see what we think about it. All right, so let's have a look at some of these images. So I took two nights of narrowband or with a duo narrowband filter. And then I took a night doing, um, I took one night doing red, green, blue. So, you know, broadband data. Um, so what we'll do, let's look at the images here. Let's look at a broadband image. Um, now bear in mind, all this is apart from being cropped this has been stacked obviously probably about there might be like about three hours here two and a half to three hours this has been stacked cropped but nothing else done to it so this is totally unprocessed at the moment apart from a little stretch you know it picks inside I'm just stretching the data so we can actually see it 
you know, what you'd expect, a bit of fringing, a bit of that purpley magenta sort of fringing around those stars. Um, like I said, I made a bit of a mistake here in that I actually meant to do three minute subs and I ended up taking five minute exposures because I forgot to swap over between narrowband and my broadband data. But anyway, that is, you know, that's not looking bad. Um, a bit noisy, you know, I've only got, like I said, it's only a couple of hours worth of data and I did overexpose the images. So that's a bit noisy, granted, but um, that's what I got for, you know, the large Magellanic cloud, that tarantula data there. Um, in terms of the horse head, the same thing, but for the horse head, just the raw data, this is how it came out looking. And again, I think that's, you know, that's pretty good. I'm not exactly sure what happened to the big star here, old Alnitak. I seem to have a bit of a, a bit of a line going through it there. Um, but generally, I think that looks pretty decent, like pretty decent data. Again, it's very small amount of data we're talking here, like yeah maybe two or two and a half hours um but yeah i think that's looking it's not looking bad again all i've done here is crop the edges and just done a basic stretch on it so i think that looks pretty decent um so let's maybe let's have a look at those two first before we look so this is basically the tarantula data now that's been processed okay so this is now you know not a lot of processing done to this. Um, the main tools that you need these days, and I guess this is part of the argument of do you need the best telescope in the world? Uh, a lot of Russ, um, what's his name? Russell Croman's tools. So Blur Exterminator here. Um, I gave obviously gave this a blast with Blur Exterminator sort of first. Um, then I did a bit of a stretch on it. Then star exterminator so get rid of this take the stars out so i can just work on the actual image in the background and then finally you know a bit of noise exterminator and it was a pretty noisy image so you know you can see you can kind of see look um especially when you use these these tools what you can kind of go from so if you you know if you think about where we began and where we where we sort of ended here with these two images um you know, I think that's a pretty that's a pretty decent image. That's just five minute subs taken over about two and a half hours, so not that much data. Um, and that's that's a, the processed image there on the right, so not too bad. And as you can see, by the time you take the stars and you just run something like SCNR over it um, and invert the image and do the same thing again, you get rid of that magenta, so you can really clean your stars up as well. All right, so that was that data and the horse head the the red green blue on the horse head basically looked like this afterwards so again a looking you know same things really um giving it a blast with um blur exterminator noise exterminator um star exterminator processed the stars separately to the image took that magenta out of the stars um, really didn't take long to process these. These were maybe, you know, I can't remember. They might have been like something in the region of 25 minutes each or something, you know, just a quick, apart from giving them these three tools, blur, noise, and star exterminator, and then doing some, you know, some curves on the background to enhance different colors, a few masks here and there, you know, to try and protect brighter parts of the object as I'm sort of working on other parts. Um, not really a lot, you know, not a lot a complicated work on these images because I didn't really want to, I didn't really want to do too much. So I think that's come out pretty well. Like the horse's head looks pretty good there. There's quite a lot of noise exterminator on this because it was pretty noisy again, but not a bad looking image for the amount of data that we had. All right, so what should we go to next? So let's go to the narrowband data. So this is the tarantula ne um, nebula now in narrowband. And you can see it looks better because I've got five minute subs and I'm also blocking a lot of that um, light pollution now with my duo narrowband filter. Now this has not had the edges cropped out of it yet. But again, all that is is a soft stretch on the image um, and nothing else really apart from stacked data. So I haven't done a lot with that at all at this point. And again, in its raw form, that is looking, that's looking nice. That's looking good. 
I think that our um, field flattener is doing a good job. The EAF, the Gemini EAF that I used, I mean, I don't know what it's long term. I don't know how la long it will last. It was very cheap, but it did a good job um, at finding focus. And I just set it up like any, like I would do my ASI ZWO focuses, just found how many steps I needed and backlash in Nina. But yeah, it did a good job. So that's our raw data. Okay, and now let's have a look. So here we go with a bit of processing done to it. You can see that's looking pretty good now. I've you know, managed to sort of try and protect the center of the tarantula here. And we're looking at about probably about six hours worth of data here over those two nights. I have used the stars from my RGB image, so it's nice to use those red green, you know, those broadband stars so for natural stars. Um, but again, you know, came out pretty good. The, the same old tools across it, the old blur exterminator, all the exterminator tools, and uh, process that background separately. But you can kind of see again, we're getting a pretty nice image if you look at where we started and enhancing some of those colors um, and using a bit of noise exterminator tightening it up with blur exterminator we're getting a pretty nice result and I, you know stars are looking nice of course these like I said they've been brought in from my um, my broadband image so that is your narrowband five minute subs of the tarantula nebula with this telescope and then finally we had the horse head. So again, this is looking a bit better now because this is the raw stacked image, um, five minute subs. Um, just a little stretch on it there, just so you can kind of see it. As you can see, we're bringing out a bit more detail now with those narrowband filters. Um, and then when we look at our processed version over here, we can really, you know, obviously enhance it and um, sharpen everything up and um, yeah a pretty decent again not we're not talking tons of data here we're only talking about six hours of data um, and again I've brought the stars in from the RGB image but I think it's looking pretty decent I'm pretty happy with that so considering considering what we're um, Considering what we're looking at with this telescope, um, I think that um, I think for a budget budget setup, we're getting some nice we're definitely getting some nice images out of this. All right, guys. Well, thank you very much. I think you know, make your own decision about what you thought about those images. I thought they turned out pretty well, and like I said, especially these days with the use of these tools like blur exterminator, star exterminator, noise exterminator. It does make a good case, especially if you're getting into astro, maybe to buy yourself a good quality um, doublet sort of semi-opo sort of thing where you've got, you know, a good piece of glass in there. And then if there are issues like, you know, a bit of fringing or whatever it is, you can sort a lot of that out in post-processing. So I think, you know, I think if you're in the market for getting into astro, a good quality doublet refractor, whether it's Skywatcher, whether it's, I don't know, whatever, um, SV Boney makes some good ones. I've got a SV Boney 102 millimeter as well, and they, I think they make an 80. Um, I'm sure there's other brands that make them as well, like probably Sharp Star and Ascar and stuff. But the point is that, you know, here's a case for starting out, and do you need that? Do you need that super high quality triplet or not? So just some food for thought there. And um, yeah, thanks for watching, appreciate it. Hope that's been useful. And um, yeah, clear skies, clear skies to you guys imaging. Catch you on the next one.